So picture this. You wake up in a completely natural position. The day's full of potential. You're absolutely gassed. First things first, you hydrate yourself with a bottle of Hobgoblin Gold. Oh, simply decadent. So you're amped up, you're excited. You're ready to smash up with Dr. Day out of the park. So you start to get out of bed, then all of a sudden, bam! Brain forces into your mind a memory from two years ago of you stuttering over your words when you're moving to a 3 out of 10 on a prison Monday. How could you be so stupid? How could you embarrass yourself like that? Regardless though, you brush it off, but then you realise you've got to study. But then what if you walk into the classroom there's nowhere to sit? You just stood there frozen. Who do you sit next to? Everyone judgingly stares at you, your heart hammers at your chest, blood rushes to your face and you feel yourself starting to sweat. You absolutely beg your symptoms to stop, but that only seems to exacerbate them and it get worse and worse and worse. I mean, how can you face that, man? You return to the bed like the coward you tell yourself you are. I mean, how on earth are you supposed to face that? You've already faced two fucking draining battles and you haven't even left your bed yet. How on earth are you supposed to climb the Mount Everest of difficulties in this life when you can't even get out of fucking bed? To describe anxiety to someone who doesn't live with it, I'd say it's like you're in a video game and there's ominous music playing because you're about to run into a boss or something bad's about to happen. But there is no threat. Yet the ominous music just keeps on playing. In my experience, anxiety is a vicious cycle of overthinking, and your brain fabricates dangers that don't even exist. And this leads to irrational fears, such as, you know, fearing walking down the street because you might get hit by a car. You know, like I said, fearing walking to a classroom because you don't know where to sit. Like, you could fear lighting a candle in case you set a house fire. You could fear standing in a row with someone in case you got toppled over like a bowling ball. Or you could even fear me. Or maybe the last one isn't quite rational. But still, you see how rational these thoughts are and like, they hold no weight whatsoever. But you still think them and you still fear them in everyday life. Now these fabricated dangers feed each other until your brain's nothing but one big roaring monster. A paranoia, fear, low self-esteem and every shitty memory you've ever had compacted into one. Fuck you, mate. Well, that renders you a drained hermit who can't even open his fucking curtains. And all he is is a mere puppet to his shitty brain chemistry. But the thing is, it doesn't have to be this way. So I'm going to show you five methods that you can install literally tomorrow, bro. And you will start winning that battle against anxiety. You will start fighting back, mate. You will start winning the war. Because you deserve better than to be trapped in your own mind, bro. This mental health condition is, is, is harrowing, honestly. I mean, the fact there's people out there right now struggling to do it, struggling to walk outside their room because of it. Man, it's fucked. But I want to reiterate, there is a lot of hope, man. I was someone who had really struggled with low self-esteem, you know, I developed a stutter, made no eye contact. Like, I used to go around school, like, I'm um, scared to see this one guy. Because we always, like, fist bumped when we saw each other, right? But I was terrified of seeing this guy. I would like, look around corners. He was a lovely bloke as well. I would, I would look around corners trying to see this guy. But I was, I was so anxious because when, when I saw this guy, like, oh, no, I, I know how to spot him. But what if I messed it up, bro? What if I made it awkward, bro? That'd be horrible. I'd fucking hate that. And, like, bro, I could not wear grey hoodies because I was so anxious that I'd literally sweat straight through him because of the symptoms, like, the heart palpitations, everything. It was fucking horrible, bro. I didn't want anyone to live like that. And now... Now I'm someone who's relatively anxiety free, you know, it's not completely gone, but it's gone to the point where I can really kind of enjoy my life without the, the everyday worries of anxiety because I've implemented these methods. So I really hope you can make an improvement too. And it's gone from an uphill battle to a downhill battle, bro. And that's what I want for you, man, because you can fucking overcome it, bro. There's so much hope. So please listen to these five tips and install them in your daily life. Big love. So tip number one. I want you to locate all the anxiety inducing habits that you have, right? For a couple of days, maybe even a week, what I want you to do is every time you feel anxious, look back to what you've just been doing. You know, I feel anxious now, but I was just token on an elf bar then or having a fag, so we'll add that to this, you know, nicotine. Uh, you know, I feel anxious, I've just had a coffee, maybe I'll put, I'll put that on. I feel anxious, I've just been on social media for six hours straight, we'll work that on as well. You know, I feel anxious after just eating like, you know, a fucking whole McDonald's meal, some processed shit food, we'll add that to the list as well. I want you to develop a list of potentially anxiety-inducing hobbies that you indeed have, and I want you to slowly reduce these or cut them out ideally. Little disclaimer though, what I do not want you to do is cut out the things that cause anxiety that you know are good for you, like social encounters or sexual encounters. Um, I have a lot of them, by the way. Just let you know, right, I have, I have a lot of them. Um, and you can also try implementing some things into your routine that actively reduce anxiety, for example, exercise, go to the gym, get your vitamin D in, all this stuff, all this stuff you already know, right? And also, this brings me on to tip number two. 
So tip number two is start meditating. Now this is absolutely pivotal. Meditating is a fantastic tool you can use. It essentially helps you regain control of your own mind because because of like short attention spans, because we're constantly on TikTok, social media, we need constant stimulation. And it's absolutely fucked our attention spans, right? So that's some of the reasons you should get on social media. If you want your short attention span is directly contributing to your anxiety. It's just filling your heads with thoughts constantly, which leads to you overthinking it. We know what that does for anxiety. So, But meditation is a tool that allows you to kind of bring back your attention span, improve your attention span, improve mental control, and allows you to be present in the moment, which is so important if you want to be happy. Because there's a quote, anxiety is the future, depression is the past, but happiness, true happiness is in the present. So you wanna try and be in the present as much as possible. Now, if you wanna get into meditation, I'd recommend downloading an app called Medito. It's one I personally use, completely free to use, no ads, nothing like that. Um, you just There's loads of guided meditations on there. Just wait one for five minutes, 10 minutes, listen to what he says and then you're absolutely sorted. I will have a specific video on meditation coming up soon, so I will delve further into that subject then. Just download Medito, get on it, it's fantastic. And I think mastering your mind is a very, very important because if you suffer from anxiety, you know how much damage your mind can inflict on itself. So if it can inflict damage on itself, surely if you roll reverse it, it can also inflict so much repair and benefit to itself and happiness as a result for you. I mean, just think about the other way. If you learn to control your mind, so work on that. Your mind is the greatest tool you have. Now, the third tool I'd use is speaking out about it. Now, I know this is so generalised and so publicised everywhere, but what people don't say... Now, I'm speaking for the male experience here. I can't speak for the female experience because I'm scared of women. But um, I'm, no, I'm joking. But um, what I'd recommend is picking one or two max three very close people you can trust with everything now you do not want to be going telling everyone this telling everyone your issues because as bad as this sounds it makes you look very weak and you do not want everyone to know about your issues because you want to be as a man you do want to be strong that doesn't mean you can't admit weakness to your closest friends but if you go around spreading it everywhere there will be very negative consequences for you so i recommend just picking a few friends you trust that really trust and ideally in an ideal world people who you recognise suffer from anxiety through the symptoms as well. So maybe you can get two birds and one stone and you can both talk about it and both benefit from that. But I think really, um, once you identify it as a bit of an issue uh, and you speak out about it, your friends can help you with that as well. They can they can recognise when you're comfortable in situations. It really does help to have a friend in this. And uh, once, once you've spoken out about it, you know, it's the first step to addressing it and, you know, improving it really. Yeah, you're right, boys. It's editing Patrick out. I just want to say about speaking out about it. It's not as terrifying as you think. Just do it in a conversation where your mate's exposing something like from him, one of his secrets as well. Then you can just slide it in. Honestly, people are so understanding about it. You'll never get a negative reaction to it. I know it's terrifying. But first, that's another step in your fight against your anxiety. Also, if you really do need to, you can do it a little bit intoxicated because, you know, alcohol does reduce social anxiety quite a bit. So not too much alcohol just a little bit does help that's how that's how i first told people about it you know so but it's not recommended do it sober if you can and um also once you said it and uh, you know you know it's um something you need to work on don't see it as like this label you've got oh no i'm anxious that's that's the wrong attitude what you want to see it's kind of like if you gain some fat and you need to lose the fat it's like you are overly anxious, so you need to become less anxious. You don't have anxiety, because once you start labelling yourself, there's a tendency to internalise that label, and that's not what we want, because that in turn will make you more anxious. Because you'll, you'll, you'll get anxious and you think, oh, I've got anxiety, it's fine. But if, if you get anxious and think, oh, fuck, I'm overly anxious today, I need, I need to get rid of that, I need to work on that, then that's a better mindset to have, I find. Now, step four. Now, this is a massive issue, not just in terms of anxiety, but in general. And this is treating the source, not the symptoms. So um, the common method, once you realise that you're suffering from anxiety, is to go on pharmaceutical drugs. Now, I've never tried these. Uh, I've done some research into them. I'm not massively knowledgeable on them. But from my experience, what they tend to do is treat the symptoms. And that is not what we want to do here. Because although, yes, you may get some relief from it, it's not going to solve the underlying issues. And I think... Um, Anxiety is built upon a lot of issues that are deep within, or maybe not so deep within, but you need to solve yourself. And I think it's way better that you try every single method you can in order to combat the anxiety and try and defeat it, because that will be so much healthier for you if you can defeat the anxiety by your own means, as opposed to just pharmaceutical drugs. I think they have to be a last, last resort. Like I heard Hugh Man have this analogy, you know, um, if you've got a pebble in your foot, you don't just take an aspirin for it, do you? You take the pebble out of the foot. So go to the source and, solve, and fight the source as opposed to just trying to treat the symptoms. Now my final tip, tip five, 
is try and locate the sources of this anxiety. I mean, I said deal with the sources in the previous step, but I specifically alleviate into the physical sources here. So for example, for me, a lot of it was um, unhappiness with the way I looked. I was quite fat. I was very fat, I was like 106 kg. I had stretch marks, which I hated. I had acne, which I hated. I hated the way I looked. So I'd say work on yourself as well, your physical appearance, if that's a source of anxiety for you, and do what you can to combat that as well. And then you'll see some of the anxiety alleviated through that method. Or if it's a deep rooted mental issue that's causing it, uh, I'd say perhaps do whatever you can to solve that as well. I'm not going to comment on that too much because for me, I found anxiety is more caused from low self-esteem in terms of like how I physically looked as opposed to like mental trauma or something. So I'm not gonna try and give you advice on something I don't know about. That's That will be completely irresponsible. But I say do your own research into that and um, see what you can do on that front. Perhaps contact a therapist. But uh, yeah, try and uh, root out the sources and deal with them. But again, in the gym, it's never gonna hurt you. So, you know, may as well do that as well. Now boys, if you want another video like this, because I really don't wanna rush any tips or anything, I wanna give as much detail as I possibly can for all of them. I'll be very happy to do another video of this same format. Uh, because I believe there's a lot more tips which I could offer, but I don't want to just rush them and cram them all into one video. I want to give it the quality time that it deserves because I actually want to try help some people out like this video because anxiety truly is fucking horrible, man. I, I know how rough it can be. A little message if you're suffering with that right now. Hang on in there, mate, and start to fight it, bro. Start to fight as hard as you fucking can, bro. Because there is nothing more beautiful than overcoming it, bro. It's like you've been walking with a fucking weighted vest all your life and you get to take that weighted vest off, bro. It's fantastic, mate. And I really do hope you get to feel that one day. So keep on working on it. Use the tips in this video. Um, and yeah, I think we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, you know, like, comment, subscribe, all the good shit. If you want to ask me anything in the comments, let me know. Or if you want to critique me on anything, let me know as well. I'll be happy to see it. And I'm not quite sure how you could contact me. I think I do have an email. But if anyone's having any issues or anything, I'll be happy to respond. I'd happily take the time out of my day to try and help you out. So, you know, don't be ashamed to drop me a message. I'm also there. I'll see. I'll make sure my email or something's there so you can contact me. And yeah, man, best of luck with your mental health journey. I really do hope it improves. Thank you for watching, boys. Big love. And I will see you soon.